Oh, okay. I uh, wasn't expecting that. Wasn't expecting it to get that short. It was a kind of a short season. Oh, hi. Yes, uh, this is the Narcotic Casserole Review, and we're going to talk about uh, season four of Silicon Valley. <laughs> Uh, Silicon Valley was a show I came in late in the game, but man, did I binge the ever-loving hell out of it. I freaking love Mike Judge. I loved him back in the days when Beavis and Butthead was considered contraband in my house. Most most kids my age were smuggling marijuana. It was the 80s, so maybe some cocaine. Uh, for me, it was Beavis and Butthead. That was that show. If my mom said don't watch it, guess what? I'm gonna watch it. I followed Mike Judge all the way through. Uh, Office Space, I think, is and is one of the greatest cult masterpieces of all time. Idiocracy, honestly, is one of the scariest movies of all time, particularly when you take into account what's going on today. <laughs> Silicon Valley, I think, is his, his latest triumph. It is a great show. The thing I've, overall, I think the reason I love this show is it, it walks a fine line where I am not tech savvy, which is, I'm not tech savvy, I mean, despite appearances. I mean, yeah, I'm making this on a phone and I'm... Mm, but even then, compared to what these guys can do, I am not. But the show doesn't insult your intelligence, but at the same time, doesn't hold back. It's a show that doesn't treat you like an idiot. Matter of fact, they kind of say that for uh, some of the times the characters themselves are idiots. Actually, it kind of goes into that whole concept of just because you are insanely smart at one thing doesn't mean you're smart in other things. And uh, all these characters, well, some of these characters, are absolutely inept when it comes to uh, how to talk to people in business, but when it comes to software work, man, do they shine. Fast forwarding over to season four. Uh, this one, I was taken off guard. It was a 10 episode season. Normally it's a 12 episode. Didn't, ex didn't see that coming. And another thing I was pretty much shocked to realize is that uh, this is the last season for TJ Miller as Ehrlich. Uh, he, is, he is one of the shining the scene stealers of this show but he never it was never so much that he overshadowed the rest of the cast there was never a uh, Fonzie situation on this show um, so I was very surprised to see that at the end of the season oh yeah we're gonna have to get into spoilers on this one sorry but at the end of the season all of a sudden Ehrlich is sold off by Gavin Belson in in freaking Thailand so that was an unexpected uh, way to way to write out a character I hope somewhere down the line, maybe when the show wraps up, that Ehrlich comes back. I mean, it's open-ended enough that he could, but at the same time, I kind of hope he does. What was amazing was that even with it, with it being 10 episodes, there was a lot happened in this. I mean, in the first couple episodes, Gavin Belson ends up getting kicked out of Hooli and tries to go on a big, uh, a big bid to reinvent himself. And actually, one route the season took, which I was, I admit I was kind of sad that it didn't go further with it. You know, because I was like that idea when enemies form an alliance, and I was loving where it was going, where Richard, who was facing hard times himself, actually sought to team up with uh, Gavin. And he was in a place where it would have made sense, where he starts... It would have been kind of cool to see Gavin kind of reach back to that time when he became an innovator. It would have led to some really nice stuff. And I'm... And the season ends on a level of ambiguity where on... Ostensibly, it seems like they're going to go back to being co competitors, but at the same time, I'm left to wonder if maybe uh, they might actually find a way to compromise. So I guess you could say by the finale, I felt kind of disappointed that we seem to be going back to the well, when honestly, one of the things I've been loving about the first three seasons, particularly the finales, is that the it felt like, it felt like a gradual... Progression. I always loved that this show felt like a very, like a climbing Mount Everest kind of situation. And I was always astonished, like whenever they, they it seems like they're going to, you know, crash and burn, all of a sudden something saves them. And every, and this finale has that. Matter of fact, I, I it was probably one of the most, I, I never thought a, a, friger, a refrigerator could save, could save them, but it was a brilliant way. And the best part is it was set up a couple episodes back uh, with, Gilfoyle and his war with the smart fridge, it that was that was outstanding. There's a lot of plot threads which which have been left hanging. I mean, there's Dinesh with his relationship with his psycho hacker uh, ex girlfriend, um, which I'm sure is going to come back to haunt them. Matter of fact, this season, uh, a demon from the end of season one 
came back to haunt uh, haunt them. And unfortunately, history repeats itself, but not in a way that feels like a rehash. And in fact, it actually led to a nice bait and switch for the finale. When it comes to season four, I guess my final thoughts on it was that while there was a lot of really great stuff that happened in it, I felt it was the only season where nothing where nothing really changed uh, for the most part. One of the things I loved about the first three seasons is that there it felt like things built, like things like it was a gradual uphill build. Um, I felt like Richard, in his endeavor to try to make a new internet, I felt like he didn't. I don't feel like he really got anywhere in that endeavor. If anything, I still feel like he's at square one on that, and. I, I didn't feel like it went anywhere on that. It just felt like all the other seasons, it felt like he was building to something. This one didn't really feel that way. One could probably say it was a transitional season. Maybe. Who knows? We'll get there. But in the meantime, uh, I'm sad to see T.J. Miller leave, but T.J. Miller's been doing big things now. I mean, he's doing big, he's in Deadpool too. But um, overall, I'm going to have to give uh, Silicon Valley season four a three and a half helpings. So what do you think of Silicon Valley season four? Did you like it? Did you feel the same way? Did you did you have differing opinions? Leave it in the co comments below. And for further content on Narcotic Casserole, just like, share, subscribe, and uh, just keep it keep your eyes on here, and we will not disappoint. Why did I just make that promise? <laughs>